So let's power through this. Attenuation and subject contrast. We have to learn these words, attenuation. We have to learn these words, subject contrast. So let's jump in here. This is, uh, and I have one of these here, a step wedge. This is well demonstrated with a step wedge, okay? Um, so first of all, the word attenuation. Attenuation is a word meaning filtering or um, absorption, okay? So instead of saying absorption or filtering, pretty much from now we're going we're to we're gonna try to use the word attenuation. So attenuation is a partial absorption of the X-ray beam. So shown here at the right, the attenuation of a hom homogeneous beam by an, a homogeneous aluminum step wedge is different depending on the thickness at each step. So you have to imagine here for the purposes of discussing this that, that the primary radiation is all one energy. Now we know that's not true. We know our X-ray beam is made up of heterogeneous X-rays, right? X-rays in all different energies, low energies to high energies. But imagine for a moment that the X-ray beam were only made of one energy of X-ray photons. Let's say they're all 80 kV photons, okay? Down at the thin end of the step wedge, even to the left of the step wedge where there's no step wedge, then all of the radiation hits the image receptor and makes the image receptor perfectly black in that spot, okay? Go up onto the first step, and you get some of the x-rays being absorbed, attenuated, okay? A step higher, a little bit more are attenuated. And once you get up to the third step on the step wedge, notice that it goes from being black to a kind of a dark gray color, okay? Why is it dark gray? Because a lot of the x-ray beam made it through and is, and is graying up the image receptor in that spot, but some of the x-ray beam was attenuated, okay? And as the wedge gets thicker, notice more of the beam is attenuated and the radiographic density down on the receptor at the bottom gets lighter and lighter and lighter. The thicker body parts are, the more they attenuate the x-ray beam. Okay. I'll give it to you again, but I like to tell you things multiple times. Roughly speaking, every four centimeters of body tissue thickness attenuates 50% of the beam, about half the beam every four centimeters, okay? Um, and four centimeters is like, like that, okay? So every time a body part goes from that to that, half the beam is absorbed in, over that distance. Attenuation includes all three interactions, the photoelectric interaction, Compton, and coherent scatter. Both absorption and scattering prevent x-rays from reaching the image receptor. Now that's a good thing. You want some of the x-rays to be absorbed, attenuated. If every x-ray in the primary beam made it to the image receptor, then you'd have just a black square on the screen, right? So you need this to happen. In fact, you need different absorption depending on the body parts and the beam energy, okay? Particulate radiation, which we don't use in the x-ray room, beta, alpha, and gamma radiation, uh, let me rephrase that, beta and alpha radiation, um, which that might mean nothing to you right now. Beta and alpha radiation are heavy um, nuclear particles from radioactive elements. Those can't make it through the body, okay? They are not penetrating. Now, that's actually a bad thing, okay? Particulate radiation um, coming from radioactive substances is, is not penetrating, and that means all of its energy just dumps right into you, okay? Whereas the X-ray beam, it can penetrate through the body and gets attenuated as it, um, as it travels through, as it travels through the body. And the thicker the body is, the more it's attenuated. X-rays are attenuated exponentially, reducing by a certain percentage for each incremental thickness of tissue and hypothetically never reaching zero. So as, as you get through the tissue, you start with 100 X-rays, four centimeters of tissue coming out the other end, you have 50 X-rays, right? Four more centimeters, 25 X-rays, and so on. It's sort of an infinite regress until you, you never reach zero, though. So, here's a picture. In this picture, a thousand x-rays are hitting this surface, a thousand little x-ray photons. So generally for each four centimeters of tissue thickness, um, you have the x-ray intensity decreasing about 50%, so for every four centimeters. That is to say, for every four-ish centimeters in increased part thickness, the technique 
the x-ray technique has to be adjusted by a factor of two, doubled. You can do that by doubling the mass or raising the KVP by 15%. You guys have played with that. Most of you, if not all of you have done that in the x-ray room. So here you go, you have a thousand x-rays incident upon the skin. The first four centimeters absorbs 500 of those x-rays. Now 500 x-rays are going from four centimeters to eight centimeters. Passing out of the eight centimeter depth, you have 250 x-rays left over. You get the story here? Eight to 12 centimeters, you go from 250 to 125. 16, 12 to 16 centimeters, 125 to 63 and so on from 16 to 20 centimeters down to 32. So we're cutting in half every four centimeters of tissue depth. And at the last depth of 24 centimeters, which is about the depth of, a, of an average adult's chest, um, you have 16 x-rays remaining. Now that's only 16 x-rays because we started off with a thousand and we made it through this many steps of, of one, two, three, four, five, six steps of, of four centimeter increases. So you have to use this to calculate how much mass or KV you need to set on your equipment, okay? Um, go ahead. measure the thickness of Enrique's hand. Let's go this way. Let's measure Enrique's hand along the width of the hand. centimeters AP, okay, or, or uh, PA or AP, whatever you want to think about it, right? It's actually PA, whatever. Um, and uh, eight centimeters lateral, okay? Um, if the appropriate technique for that was 60 KVP at 3 MAS, what would your technique have to be for his lateral? His lateral hand is thicker, right? How much thicker is it? How, we'll start off with how much thicker is his hand on lateral? Four centimeters thicker, right? 
And we said for every four centimeters of tissue increase, it attenuates half of the x-ray beam, right? So if the appropriate technique to use was 60 kV at three mass, what should my technique be on his lateral? 15 more, 15 percent more kVT. Okay. Somebody tell us what 50, 15 percent of 60 is. Can you just plug it in on your phone really quick. So the front, the equation is 60 times 0.15. What do I do with that nine? Just add it to 60. The other way to do it is take 60, <coughs> multiply it by 1.15, and that'll just give you the number. Try that. Say it louder. 69 kV. Good. So. Notice how taking 15% of 60 gives you 9, and then you just add the 9 to 60 and make 69 kV. Or you can take 60, multiply it by 1.15, giving you the full 60 plus the 15%, 69. Doesn't matter how you do it. Both ways are equivalent. So I could set 69 kVP at 3, 3 MAS, and at the receptor, these would give me equivalent exposures at the receptor. Okay. His hand was on lateral, so we can we can um, we have to we should use more exposure on lateral. How much more? Double, double the amount of receptor exposure. Okay. What's the other way? So that's number one. What's the other way I could have gotten to double? Double the mass. Okay. So what's two times three? Six. Okay, 60 at 6. If I had to choose between 69 kV at 3 or 60 at 6, what would I go with? Okay, and, and why? Uh, shorter exposure. Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe, but I could set I could set my exposure time to be the same between three mass and six mass. So I could keep the same exposure time, right? If I had um, if I had what, what do we do here? One hundred MA times what is it? Point zero three. Yeah. 0 0.03 seconds. Okay, that's three mass, right? Okay, and I could take 200 ma times 0 0.03 seconds, and so this would be 3 mas, and this is 6 mas. So I, I could have kept the kV the same and doubled the mass and still kept the exposure time the same, right? These two. Gladys and Herman, Gladys and Suki, Gina and Herman rejected. Who's cool with that? So again, I have a choice when I'm going from AP to the PA or AP to lateral, and on Enrique's hand, I can go to 69 at 3 or 60 at 6. And if I decide to go to 60 at 6, I could keep the exposure time the same as it was on the PA. So I don't have to change exposure time. Okay. Um, so it's not to help with exposure time, although we could have had, we could have chosen a setting that gave us a longer exposure time. So. They're equivalent in receptor exposure, but what are they not equivalent in? Patient dose. patient dose, right? Which one delivers more patient dose? Six mass, right? Rather than so, sixty at six delivers more patient dose than sixty-nine at three. Okay. From here to here, this is about an increase of forty percent patient dose. Okay, and this is an increase of one hundred percent. Yeah, 100% more radiation. Uh, now, the, these are teensy amounts of radiation, but it's 100% more than that other teensy amount. Um, so, which one would I rather choose? I'd rather choose the one that increases the patient exposure by 40% and does the same thing for the image as this one, right? Okay, so there you go. Now, we can learn later, and we will learn, that changing KVP doesn't only change receptor exposure, it also affects contrast. 
subject contrast, but the upside of this is that our computers can adjust that, can adjust subject contrast. So the thing that's better for the patient is to choose that setting versus that setting. And this is all based off the idea that as you move through the tissue, the x-ray beam is attenuated, and so when you go from a thin body part to a thick body part, you have to account for that by an increase in factors. Okay. And it's not like the patient gets twice as, you know, like if you have somebody like, you know, Enrique versus me, and let's for the purposes of say I'm twice as thick as Enrique, right? Um, it's not double the mass or double, the, you know, 15% of the KVP. It's every time we get a four centimeter increase, we've got to increase KVP or mass. Um, so it's, you have to make big changes is, is the moral of the whole thing, right? Making small changes to KVP or mass when you go from small body parts to big body parts is just not going to cut it. And how do you know that, right? How do you know what the body parts measure? You take a caliper, right? Take a caliper and measure the physical width of the body part, okay? And when you use calipers, don't compress the caliper on the body part. Just take the measurement, right? Take the move. Okay, I'm too big for the caliper. You take the measurement on the caliper without trying to squish it into the body and change the actual measured width, just right to the surface of the body. Calipers will be in every x-ray room, and if they're not, they should be. Okay. That's one thing. Now, what this is assuming, because it, it's really complicated to talk about it all at the same time. So what this attenuation idea is assuming is that um, the tissue is homogeneous. It's one type of tissue. It's muscle or fat, all of it together, right? But we're not all muscle. We're not all fat. We're not all bone. We're a mix of those things, right? So the tissue itself accounts for... Um, different absorbing, different, I just have to say it, differential absorption of the x-ray beam, okay? The subtle differences in attenuation between various body tissues and parts of the body due to the tissue's physical thickness, the tissue's physical density, or the tissue's atomic number. Is it made of something dense? All, so you have an x-ray beam that is heterogeneous, made of many different energies, highly penetrating rays, low penetrating rays, and everything in between. Okay? And you have a body that is made up of many different densities. Those things go together to give you your subject contrast. Okay? Subject contrast is the apparent difference in um, image density, blackening on the image, between adjacent structures. So it's not the detail of the edge of the structures or the visibility of specific body parts, it's the apparent density difference, okay? Because there's other visibility qualities that we'll have to talk about, so we have to separate this from those. This is the apparent difference in density, blackening. You have in your chest more different densities than you have in your hand, right? In your chest, you have your lungs, you have your heart, you have your bone, you have fat, you have other muscle, Heart's one of those muscles. Um, and you have other soft tissue structures. Whereas in your hand, you have mostly, for our purposes, bone, muscle, and fat. So even though two organs may be the same thickness, due to difference in atomic number and physical density, they can produce differential absorption. Let me show you an example. 